Guys, welcome to What's Barking Local Part Do today <laughs> on a Wednesday, October 16th, across Charlottesville, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth and the world. Patty Bowden and Animal Connection, the presenter of this program, 18 year anniversary, right around the horizon for this fabulous I mean, community institution. Judah, why don't we start with a two shot and welcome Patty Bowden to the show and we'll get a snapshot of yeah. what's in store for you. Okie doke. Well, as Jerry said, it's going to be our big 18. As actually, the 18th anniversary is on the 18th. That's pretty awesome. Of this month. But we are celebrating on the 25th and 26th. And we have so many things going on at Animal Connection those two days. We have uh, an 18% off sale on just about everything in the store. I mean, from foods to treats to toys. We have a prize wheel. You're going to be able to spin to get great gifts. Uh, we have raffles and uh, for things including professional pet photos from our friends Miette and Petography. She's fantastic. Uh, she is. Uh, swag bags. The biggest swag. We call them wag bags uh, that we've ever had. Um, they are they are massive. <laughs> uh, we have concert tickets. We have gift cards. Uh, we have lots of fun things going on that day, so you're going to want to come by and go to our Facebook page, and you can get all the details on that. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a large party. If you thought Dog Fest was the big party, this is even bigger. So, yeehaw. Congratulations on 18 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So You're excited <sighs> about um, this anniversary because 18 years is something to celebrate. It Talk is. maybe a little snapshot of the evolution of what you have done. With Animal Connection. Oh my gosh. Well, we've just gone from like a little 1,500 square feet to 3,600 square feet. We started with a very small boutique and uh, we actually started by selling raw food uh, many, 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 many years ago in, in my garage uh, after I had been to a holistic uh, conference with Wendy Volhard and decided I needed to do things better. So it's very fun that we have the Volhard people on our show today. So, I love it. I yep, love it. One circle. more item that you have is what's happening at Three Notch. We do. We Well, we have uh, two events. I want to mention the Zombie Walk uh, by our buddies at Houses of Wood and Straw. Um, this is raising mo money for their amazing work that they do in getting animals shelter through the winter and in the summer, uh, giving them safe places to sleep. Uh, shelter from the elements. Um, this zombie walk, you can register at their Facebook page, which is called The Howls Project, and you can go in costume. Uh, you are not allowed to wear masks. I think um, there, there's an issue or something with masks on the downtown mall, but um, but your ticket will get you drinks and appetizers at Mangione's on Main, Maya, Tavern and Grocery, and South Street. So there's going to be door prizes, raffle prizes, so that's a fun night. That is on October the 24th. Um, and then our their other event we want to talk about is Pups and Pints at Three Notch Brewery tomorrow at 6 p.m. And it, this is a very special Pups and Pints uh, because it's to celebrate Tommy's beer. And for those of you who haven't read about Tommy, uh, he was a pit bull that was extremely uh, physically and mentally abused in the Richmond area. And he, he did die. And... Um, this, this is a collaboration between Three Notch Brewery and the Richmond Animal Care Control and Hanover Animal Hospital in memory of this, this fantastic dog. And it's raising money for dogs that are in need. And the, gosh, the cans on these are just so cool. I mean, it, this is a... Look beautiful. Yeah, Dave Warwick says it's a hazelnut brown ale and it's brewed by the head brewery in Richmond at their collab house. His name is Wiley Broadus. Um, but anyway, we're going to launch this tomorrow night at Three Notch Brewery and give them a toast. There'll be treats for your dogs on the patio from Animal Connection. And gosh, that's a lot of things going on in Charlottesville this week. And, and you've welcomed yes. two fabulous people from Volhard. That's, that's right. So we have with us uh, Jen Carter, who is the marketing. Third uh, rodeo? Third that's rodeo. right. Third, Third rodeo, rodeo on this show. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so um, she knows a whole lot about nutrition and dog training and the Volhard products, which I'm extremely fond of. And she's brought with her Brian Burke, who is a CEO of Volhard. Um, he's not only uh, extremely knowledgeable in nutrition, but he's spent over 20 years in the police force, training dogs, working with the canine unit, um, helping uh, rescued uh, dogs that need to be rescued with people who need to be rescued from PTSD and putting them together and just some amazing things going on 
with what he's doing with the animals. I'm so welcome excited. to both of welcome you guys. Welcome to the show. That's right. Thanks, guys. Glad to be here. Spotlight, Jen first, the Volhard brand for That's us. Right. And then Brian, I can't <laughs> wait to hear your story. <laughs> sure. Well, guys, thanks again for having me back. I appreciate it. Yes. Every chance I get to have to come on here and talk about Volhard is a good one. Um, <laughs> we're helping dogs every day. And in this past year, we have dropped four brand new products this year. So this has That's been right. a real game changer for Volhard. Um, Wendy hasn't added a diet to the portfolio in over 20 years. That's so right. as we go through the show today, I'll be able to share some additional details. But if you've been living in a cave somewhere and you didn't know this happened, well, here we go. Today's I got some day. great news for you. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm curious of the inspiration, the evolution of the brand. I'm so curious to hear the story you were telling us off air with Blackjack, your German Shepherd, two German Shepherds at home, myself, loved GSCs. Yeah with a passion. Well, we've had several GSDs. We have four right now, my wife Lisa and I. Uh, but I think the story that I was talking about is the value of bonding with a police dog and how you work as a team and as a part. He's, he was my partner for 10 years. So the, the, the story I was telling you was that um, we got a call out one night for a home invasion. Uh, the people had been tied up. The guy took off. Um, he was armed with two handguns and they were searching for the guy in the woods and they couldn't find him. I was off duty, but they called me at home and asked me if I'd go out and track. I, I started a track and uh, he was tracking really, really intent. I mean, that's, that's how he was. When he was on, he was really a great tracker. In fact, you had to hold him back because he would, you know. So the problem I was dealing with is it really dark in the woods. It's three o'clock in the morning. I can't see anything. I keep turning my flashlight on so I can see something, but Every time you do that, it gives your position away. He was just tracking so intently, I decided it was time to cut him loose on a field search. And uh, I did that, and within a few seconds, I heard the guy scream. I didn't know where he was. Um, the two handguns were at his feet. He had bent over to shoot me. He, he knew where I was. I couldn't see him. But Blackjack bit him in the face, so he never got the shot off. Um, and the guy told me when I was handcuffing him that, he would have killed me if he got the chance. So he went to prison for the rest of his life, and Blackjack got the heroism medal. It's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Throw this question nice. to you. The instinct of dogs in general, German Shepherds specifically, of knowing um, dangerous situation versus, say, like, my little boy is a year and a half, playing rough with them, mm -hmm. licking his face. I mean, just that, like, intuitive nature of the dog. Sure. Blackjack was a really social dog, and I don't know that every police dog is. Well, not every police dog is. I wanted a social, I wanted a balanced social dog so that I could turn him off and turn him, you know, he lived at home. Um, people could pet him, you could talk to him, you, you could do the same thing as you would as your dog. But when he went to work, it was a different dog. He knew, you know, he protected the police car. Uh, I remember some of that was training. You know, we did a lot of training together. Uh, Philadelphia Police canine school back then was about 14 weeks long and uh well you know you had a you had to earn it yeah. they put you through a lot to earn it they love the dogs you were dirt until you earned it <laughs> <laughs> but that's you know they loved dogs back then they took good care of the dogs blackjack came from a shelter um you know nowadays they spend thousands of dollars on dogs and i understand that you want a well-bred dog back then you didn't do that so he came from a shelter and he ended up being a great police dog he got uh, canine team of the year, outstanding arrest nationwide by a canine team. You know, I was along for the ride. I mean, we were a team, but he did the track. You know, he's the one that he's the one that saved my life. That was important. Yeah. Obviously. Did you did you did you find that your your um, perception of dog nutrition changed as you began working with these dogs and, and learning well, more about what they really need to back, perform? You know, once I got into dog training. And it started as a very, I'm just going to train a couple dogs. Mm -hmm. That was my original intent. And then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we have 24-acre facility, eight trainers. But here's uh -huh. what Lisa and I found out a long time ago. you got to start to treat the whole dog. Uh, the behavior, because we're seeing more and more behavior things. Mm -hmm. And that can be related to the relationship with the dog owner. The dog owner, the human, you know, dog relationship can be out of whack. But also, we started seeing that a lot of things were affecting dogs in general. After we, we, we met Wendy and started learning about, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. 
I mean, that comes down to so many different things in life. Right, we didn't know, right. we didn't know, but once we started learning, well, yeah, it kind of makes sense. So the more we learned, the more we started to understand we need to make more changes because we thought we were feeding a pretty good dog food. You know, we weren't. Um, but you have to learn. So that evolution of got to the point where all our board and train work, where the dogs stay with us for three weeks, they automatically go on to follow our dog nutrition products. That's part of the package. Um, so we can eliminate the nutrition problem because some of the dogs coming in are eating, you know, look at the ingredients. Once you learn about these things and the salt divide and all that kind of stuff, right, yeah. uh, it's, we see so many different issues with dogs coming in, whether it's skin issues, whether it's ear problems, it's the constant steroid antibiotic cycle, all those things, uh, how's a dog even going to focus with some of these, you know, some of these foods, the 40 and 50% uh, sugar in them. Mm -hmm. No wonder they're hyper mm -hmm. as hell. You know, that's right. a problem. So yeah, people look so surprised when they come in and say, what, can, what do you have to make my dog calm down? I said, let's change the food. What? Let's yeah. change the food. It's, but you know what it's we've like done, kids and sugar. We, yeah. Um, I have a great training team and Arnold Appel is my training director and he went to some of the conferences so I wanted him to learn about this because mm -hmm. when I took over Volhard Dog Nutrition, I needed somebody to take over training. I can't do all of it and <laughs> be successful because I needed good management in place on the kennel side, good management in place on the training side. Um, we switched over 150 dogs Wow. to Volhard products just at, right. just at our facility. Um, and that's good. The more dogs I can switch, the more dogs we help. Mm, that's right. You know? How does this motivate you as a team member here? It's got to inspire you. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's that combination of the understanding of dog behavior and dog training in tandem with how mm -hmm. nutrition affects that dog. Um, it's weaknesses and strengths that can be, um, that owner can be empowered to help the dog be the best version of itself, right? And if you're gonna spend all the time and effort having the dog trained or teaching the dog how to be a good citizen, right? Exactly. Right. Then you wanna take the time to keep the dog out of the vet office and keep them healthy so that they live their full life and they thrive. They don't just survive every day, but they're living a life where they could do anything that they yeah, set their know, mind to. The education part of it is so important. The con average consumer doesn't understand this, and it's not their fault. No. I mean, if you look at the ads on TV for some of these products, the, the, the ads look phenomenal. Marketing We know works. they're oh, not. Boy. Marketing is huge, right? <laughs> it is. So, I mean, I realized that before we took over Volhard, I needed the, a good marketing person. As a former ad agency owner and executive, no. I am yeah. shocked by what yeah. is yeah. put out there as that people perceive as truth. But how would they understand? Yeah. But they don't know. But how would they, they understand a the difference unless we explain it to them? That's so true. We've gotten into a lot more education. We have. Uh, we don't, you know, as big as our facility is, as big as our training business is, our kennel business, we don't push it on people. Um, if somebody's coming in for board and train and they don't want to use it, I'm not going to tell them they have to. I'm going to tell them why I, I think we do it, why it's important, but mm -hmm. they don't have to. I do it. Look, the only thing that we deal with from the top down, do we do the right thing by the dog? That's number one. That's fair enough. Do isn't we it? do the right. right thing by the customer? After that, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. If you help more dogs, if I believe in something that much, I'm going to shout it out to the world. If <laughs> there you, go. you see a great movie, you're going to tell your friends. If right. you go to a great restaurant, look, all those things will never change. When I saw this, when I got to know Wendy, and I wish I could put her brain in mind, the, the lifetime commitment she's put into these products. But, you know, don't forget, she's also a Hall of Fame trainer. That's right. Right? Don't forget mm -hmm. that. So. That's her whole life has been about helping dogs be better. And she was 30 years ahead of her time. Definitely. Now everybody's starting to catch up. Do the right thing by the dog. Do the right thing by the customer. Know what you're doing, be honest and work hard. That's the only thing I knew when I got into business to begin with. That's never gonna change. Um, I get a lot of help, I get a lot of perspective from Wendy to this day. 
Um, nothing's changed with the formulas. We took over the business to allow her more time off. Um, but nothing's changed. The only thing we took it in to, further into the 21st century with e-commerce and, and you know, bringing in you marketing. optimized it. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, I own a business. I own three businesses. If I think it's really good, I want everybody to know about it. This right. thing, I've seen it personally, dog after dog after dog, how it's helped dogs. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Well, it's, it's a truth. Well, right. Right. Exactly. So I want everybody to know about it. Right. And, and you know, as a retailer, I can't even think of a product that's been around longer than Wendy's. That's been tried and true on so many dogs. I mean, in so many cases. I mean, I, I can't even think of one. You know, yeah. Wendy's very, in my opinion, very humble. She just does her thing. She just helps dogs. Mm -hmm. That's right. Me, I want to bring in Big Mouth here <laughs> and shout it out to the world. Let's let her okay? get in the mix again. Oh, boy. Absolutely. Jen, jump in here. Anywhere because you want to go. Look, she's great. Yeah. She is great. <laughs> at her job. Yeah. Her marketing, mm -hmm. she's great. Uh, it was one of the best decisions I ever made in business. Thank you. You, you yeah. can't purchase enthusiasm uh, like this. No. no it's thanks. really easy. Uh, my job is super easy, and that's because it's a good product. Um, the reason I agreed to come to Volhard in the beginning was because I use the product. I mm -hmm. was engaged with the product and with issues with my own dogs before I even became engaged as an employee. And I've seen what Volhard can do personally with my dogs, who I care about tremendously. And it's easy for me to be able to then share that with other people and bring it home to something personal and say, let me tell you what it's done for me and how it can help your dog. And so when you have a good product, it sells itself. It really does. All right. I've done yeah. is take Wendy's legacy and make it sustainable. That's all I've done. And it's easy to do because everybody's on the same page. You know, Brian and I both understand what Wendy's mission was when she got started. And we want to make that go as long as it possibly can go. And um, we all are dog people. Um, our lives are consumed around animals. And so it's easy. That's where my passion lies. It's not difficult getting up for work in the morning. And it's, I work all the time because <laughs> everyone you meet, the first question they have, you know, you're sitting around the dinner table and they're like, listen, my dog has this problem. You know, and you're like, okay. And then my other half walks in and says, are you selling them food? And I said, no, they asked me. Right. I didn't do it. Right. <laughs> I right. didn't do it. Yeah, it's, it's hard Love to turn it. it off sometimes. Well, yeah. the, cool, the cool thing is, too, and I've been to several of the global pet shows this year, is you know, every pet food company out there seems to be just reacting to the market. And, you know, whether all they the think it's good for the dogs or not, it's, it's all market driven. Yeah. You know, profit Prop market driven, profit driven, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's really good for the dogs or not. And the nice thing about Volhard is everything, every th product is prepared with a purpose, and everything mm -hmm. that's been added this year has a specific purchase, uh, purpose that is going to be uh, just enhance what they already <coughs> have. I mean, there's nothing out there just because the market says so. I mean, it's, it's because there is a specific purpose for the health of this dog. Take grain, for example. Exactly. Let's just, let's oh, just my earmark God. that for a second. So oh my Lord. 40 years ago, Wendy formulated a diet that was good for dogs. Right. Okay? They're going to help that dog be the best version of itself internally, externally. Everybody trends, fads, come around, jump on the bandwagon, uh, VCs, entrepreneurs, whatever, oh wherever gosh. they saw the, to chase the mighty dollar. Now all of a sudden, what is the main theme, right? First grains were evil. Carbohydrates are evil, right? Now, all of a sudden, where do I see? Don't buy any food except for it's grain inclusive. Well, welcome back to what we've been doing for 40 years. I'm glad <laughs> it took that you amazing? that long. Yeah. You know, and it comes right back to the basics. Are you formulating a food for the dog or are you finding the cheapest way through so that you can make money until it burns out? Well, now that you right. see what our products entail, every ingredient has a specific purpose. I think most folks that understand Valhard know that. Um, in order to keep the quality high and not sacrifice quality for quantity, it costs a few more bucks sometimes. Look at the new rescue product. We had a lot of deliberations internally about the cost of this. 
Um, it's not because you thought the price point was going to outprice the market, and then well, you wouldn't get uh, I traction. I, I was yeah, I was concerned about the price point, but the thing that bothered us the most was, uh, and Lisa, my wife, and Jennifer actually hit me over the head about this. Um, the dehydrated vegetables, a lot of companies, a lot of dog food companies buy them from China. A lot of them. That's right. It's cheaper. It's very cheap. A lot cheaper. We decided, no, we're not buying products from China and put Volhar's name on it. Um, you know, I got to look at everything. I mean, the whole, th the price point that you're talking about, all those things. And the other thing is the pork liver, the dehydrate. It costs more money to do it that way. You know what? Well, it's pretty obvious See, we to always me. did it the right way, so yeah. we're not changing it now. If right. we're going to do the right thing, it's going to cost a little bit more money. But if it fixes the dog's health, yeah. There's the value that was the point, right? Yeah. That was Bingo. the point of it, right? right. And the, it, fixes, it, it fixes the dog's health in a, in a way that's not stressful. I mean, right. people um, ask me all the time, well, oh, whatever, you're, whatever we're talking about, it's more money than what I'm feeding right now. Okay, but well, what's more stressful? Are you giving your dog a different product? Or you're taking them in for medical care mm -hmm. in a clinic with dogs barking oh, I mean, and I mean, what, somewhere what, that he's not familiar what with. What you're saying, Patty, the, right. the, the amount of vet visits, just look at the steroid antibiotic cycle. Exactly. Right. Um, What's more stressful on your dog's body? You're talking about probably, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks every time you go to the vet. Right. Right. And it still didn't fix the problem. And That's right. just so you know, one course of antibiotics for your dog takes eight months for the gut to recover. That's one course of antibiotics. Isn't that something? That's right. a long time. So if your dog is already predisposed to all kinds of issues, and there's a lot of breeds out there that come yeah. with their baggage, right. you know, along German with shepherds. them. Yeah, well, and you these, have to be sensitive to that. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not about, wow, that's a cute little dog. It's about, okay, that's a cute little dog, but it's gonna come with all of these issues, even as a purebred dog. Now, factor in a shelter dog, mm -hmm. which you know nothing about. That's right. Right, so now you have a catch-as-you-can situation with a shelter dog who's exhibiting some kind of issue. You have no idea what their background is. You have no idea how healthy their parents were. You have no idea what the, if they were milk-fed, vaginally birthed. You know, you it know, makes a difference. When we bring it in does. these rescues from First Semper Fido, um, I think I mentioned Lisa founded that. When we bring them in, and we just brought in, we just started three new teams, the first thing we do is put them on NDF2. Um, and then I start the kennel folks, the kennel staff who take all the care of the dogs, put them on sauerkraut. Yep, fermented Let's veggies. Some, get some fermented veggies going in there and help their gut bacteria. Because they're, they're shadow dogs. I don't even know their backgrounds. Right. You may know it was taken, you know, it was turned in because it's too much dog, those types of things. But you don't know the background. You don't know the breeding of the dog. Because they're not all shepherds. Sometimes our last class was all mm -hmm. mixed dogs, mixed right. breeds. And you don't know what they've seen in their lifetime. Correct. They have right. You know, I mean, look, sometimes they wash out. It can happen with a service dog because they have to be, you know, they right got to be dog. really looking real good by f before we let them graduate. The last class took six months. So you're, you're going at the pace of the veterans, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer because some of these guys have traumatic brain injury, uh, the post-traumatic stress. Uh, so all those things factor into how long does a class take, but we want to optimize their health. We want them to have this dog for a long time. That's why I try to get young dogs, one to three, one to three years of age, so they have for a long time. They have runway. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious yeah. to this. Um, this is the businessman in me thinking. If you guys have a superior product, which you obviously do, um, how do you close the gap or drive brand and market awareness for the product when you may not have the marketing resources that a big brand could potentially have. Well, one of the things we That's started... That's got to be your challenge, right? Is that the challenge? Oh, the it's a huge yeah. challenge. Look, mm -hmm. before I told you, before I bought the business, I knew I needed a good marketing person. Uh -huh. I mean, I have a good business attorney. I have a good financial advisor. I have a great accountant. Uh, but we talked about these things. If, look, and I wanted to blow this thing up. Right. Not, it's Far never, wide. Well, it's never going to be in PetSmart. That's not what I'm talking about. But I want more brand awareness, like you said. So one of the things we started, when Wendy's still in the business, um, we started an <laughs> SEO program. Um, we have a pretty strong SEO program going. We started that in 2000, I think, 16. So when we first started it, 
Search engine optimization for the yes. people that are watching. Right. When you type in keywords in Google, yeah. their brand shows up on first exactly. page, high on the page. Right. That's what we. Yeah. That's one of the things because the world's driven by Google now, right? Yeah. Um, segue to Jen. Boots on the street. And mm -hmm. right, her resume. And when we, I came down to interview her because she had left a position in another job that I found out about. Somebody put a bug in my ear. <laughs> we did a four hour, a four hour interview. And it was a long, you know, because I knew it was going to be a really important decision for me. Right. Uh, I wanted to get it right the first time. I did meet her before that mm -hmm. at a different event where, when she was working for a different organization. And I was really, imp Lisa was really impressed, my wife. So when this came up, we were like, hmm. <laughs> It was very Michael. fortuitous. Yeah, and it was kind of weird how it all happened. But it's yeah. about right. grassroots when you're at, you know, yeah. when you don't have a marketing budget, you know, a bunch of money to, to buy a $50,000 spot in media. Uh, it becomes about grassroots. And so how I combat that is I'm out traveling doing nutritional seminars, you know, all over the country. And you uh, just went to the uh, Association of Canine Professionals, yep. big, big dog right. training yes. conference. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Going out to yep. conferences, yep. you know, being able to be boots on the ground, talking to people, listening to their issues, you know, I th I think our, help them one at a time. I think our affiliates have done a really good job. We yes. have affiliates all over the country. We and do. I think mm -hmm. when we took Is over, that the brick was... and mortar retail, an affiliate? No. 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 So no. We, no. Have, uh, yeah. we have folks that earn commission. Uh -huh. uh, most of them are trainers or groomers or they're, uh -huh. they're involved with dogs. That, that's our basic model. Okay. And what they do is they uh, offer uh, education and product uh, that is Volhard to their clients when it's appropriate and in turn for them being on the ground where they are uh, throughout the United States and Bermuda um, they get a commission Smart. Uh, yeah. we also this year have just instituted uh, a bunch of new programs one is the reseller program so um, well Patty <laughs> was an affiliate she started off as an affiliate she moved to the reseller program that did not exist before so now we have upwards of nine locations across the country you, know, you got one watching right now I'm gonna relay this to you you're gonna appreciate this um, this is from a retailer in Texas all right can I sell Volhard in Texas I'm interested in carrying the brand there you go we're interested in you sure. on the, she's watching in Houston Texas That's right fantastic. Fantastic. I tag you in the feed and you in the feed so okay. you guys can follow up. That's that's you absolutely yeah, can. That's right. Yeah. That's right. She also wants a, a patty cutout. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See? Ooh. You know, Jerry, when we started. Trace will uh, get one for you. Six states watching right now, Brian. <laughs> we had, I think when we took over, we had 30 some affiliates. We're up to 65 affiliates yeah. plus resellers. But here's the thing here's the number that intrigued me. The retention rate from new yeah. customers. That's mm -hmm. the key. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the yeah, key. Right. Uh, our retention rate went up 27% from last year to this year alone. To me, that's a pretty big number. Proof of concept. Right. It is. Um, but I, I, no, I just I had this to... conversation with her today. Right. I think it's we're doing more education, we're doing more blogs, mm -hmm. and I think the affiliates are doing a really good job starting to get the word out. And you're incentivizing right. them to continue working for you. Well, the, the, right, yeah. and they've yeah. always been incentivized. Yeah. We right. just, we're just expanding on some things, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to interject, too. I mean, there are a lot of dog foods that people perceive as expensive. The nice thing about this product is it is flexible. You can buy good quality frozen meat from your, your local pet retailer, mm -hmm. or you can buy things on sale at your grocery store. You can use farmer's market vegetables. Mm -hmm. You can use what's ever fresh. And the, it's the base mix of this, um, these products that are so important because they completely balance uh, right. Using whole um, whole grains, vitamins, minerals, whole food products, and you know there may be some other mixes on that are out there. This is the only one I have in my store. This is the only one I'm going to have in my store, mm -hmm. and because you know, I I know where the products come from, and like Jen said, there is nothing that is outsourced out of the United States, which is so important. Oh. And it does Especially have the grains, now. and they are good grains. You know, there's, there's grains and there's grains, but right. every Correct. grain in here has a, a very specific purpose and is not used as a filler. And right. that's, where, that's where the big difference lies in these foods. Meaning, as we said earlier, so many uh, dry foods, canned foods, freeze-dried foods, they have filler in there to yeah. make them affordable and to make the pet food companies profitable. Well. This company, I mean, sure, everybody's got some profit in mind, but they truly have the needs of the dogs at heart. 
and you know, and thusly the the customer at heart. And that's and how that's, we, that's, that's very how important. we did it in our dog training business. You know, the first thing is do the right thing by the dog. Exactly. But those ethics and morals for Lisa and I are never going to change. It's right. just not going to change. I would rather lose it than uh, sacrifice that in order to make a buck. Am I in business to make money? Well, sure I am. But right. there's a there's a right way to do it. You know, and I'm I'm taking a long view in, on Volhart. I could have made a lot more money by not hiring her. It wouldn't have been nearly as exciting. No, it wouldn't. listen. <laughs> I'm sorry, listen, I might not have the whole been, point I, I, was, we know Jen. I don't, <laughs> right. I had to think about time. that for a minute <laughs> yeah. now. How do like, I expand? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> How do I expand this over time? I'm not a marketing expert. That's her, right? Yeah. So exactly. that was a good one there. That was a big her. thing. It was good. And I, I think we were. I think we're well on our way. And here's, really here's the home run of it all, okay? And I will beg you to tell me a single other dog food company that's so embedded in dog training and breeding yeah. that has 65 dog trainers across the country using the food yeah. with their dogs in training and in daily life. And is not funded by the vet industry. Right. right. Thank yeah. you. So there isn't. Everybody, all these other food companies, they get somebody to stand up there and say that they had some kind of unfortunate issue with their dog, and that prompted them to start a dog food company. That person is not formulating that dog food. They've hired someone out of the industry to do that work. They have no idea. They're not a formulator. They have no idea. They're the front of the company. I'm telling you that the bench of this company starts with Wendy Volhard as a breeder, a trainer, and a nutritionist to Brian Berg and Lisa Berg, who are trainers and dog advocates in many different fields between the kennels and training and nutrition. And every day this food is tested yeah. in right. those environments, in the dog That's environment, huge. not in the food store, not at Joe Schmo's house and see if they like it, throw kibble on the floor and see if they'll eat it. This is tried. The dog's behavior is tested. And we have facts yeah. that show that this food creates change. Dana Brigham is watching right now Dana. in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Woo -woo. Yes. And so she says, <laughs> your product speaks for itself. It yeah. is quality, quality, quality. You have um, a number of folks watching. Renee Lemure. Yep. Lamoureux. Hey, Renee. Beth Thompson. Watching right now, I count nine states watching the program. I, layman's question. Yeah. I'd love to learn about business. You made a comment that it will not be in a big box retailer ever. Why so? Are you having to buy shelf space like grocery? No. no. no? Uh, number one, if you go into a PetSmart, you see a bazillion different options. Options. Yeah, of course. Well, I'm not going to have ever let Volhard Dog Nutrition get lost in that maze of crap um it has to be for a specific purpose we'll allow it in certain boutique stores uh that we approve but i will never let it uh and i would never i would never do that to wendy and i think uh that speaks for itself it's it just becomes another dog food right this has to be about nutrition so if it just sits on a shelf Plus, remember, our stuff doesn't have any preservatives in it. Right. So you're um, saying it has a shelf life. That's yes. not why I don't put it. That's not why it won't be in a big box store. But I'm just saying as an aside, it's, I don't want it there. It doesn't belong to the person that says, let me see. Uh, let's see, benefit all this. Oh, let's try this crap. No, right. I, I, I'm never going to allow that well, to happen. Well, your mission to staying um, ingredients in America kind of is umbrellaed by this mission of supporting local Mm-hmm. Like Animal Connection. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. It's like in the same family. Yeah. And and I I also want to you know talk about transparency because you know that's that's a big issue in dog food. But I remember um, almost 20 years ago when I was learning about Wendy Volhard and learning about diet. Ernie. And, yes. And he had an extremely compromised immune system, and you know Wendy had a version of. What we're calling the NDF, the National uh, the, the Natural Diet Foundation, but she was also transparent. She had it in her book. If you want to make all these things yourself, this yeah. is what's in it. Yep. This is how to combine it. Yeah. So I was doing it myself, and it wasn't until later in years where she said, "I'm going to package this so that you don't have to do this." But the fact that she very freely said, 
this is where you get it, this is where you get this supplement or that or this or the vegetables or the wheat or whatever goes into it. She was very, very transparent about how you could do it yourself if you did not want to buy a product. And you know, I've, I have always honored that. I mean, that is just, that's a huge deal. No one else will do that she for you. She has been a giant in the right. in dog industry for she has. 40, she is. 50, I don't know how many years, but I don't want to date her, but probably <laughs> 50 years. Yep. Um, when she's told me some of the stories about titling a Yorkshire Terrier, uh, she just has done amazing things, but she's very understated about it. Mm -hmm. um, she just does, she just has a love for animals and dogs and, and helping people. You know, when you help the dog, you help the people. Um, you right. know, she's still training part-time. Mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing to well, me. Well, she's so, long you know, that's Look, that's good stuff. And she always gives me perspective on a lot of different things. Um, she's a very wise lady. Um, make sure she gives me 20 bucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, going to see this. But I did hear, I do, want to, right. I do want to tell you something real funny. The first time I met her was at our place. I didn't, Lisa went to the first Healthy Dog Conference with Robin McFarlane, who's a great trainer in mm -hmm. Iowa, mm -hmm. um, who's now an affiliate and a reseller. All right. But yeah, so we got this all together and we did a conference and Lisa was still in the house and I walk over to the parking lot to meet this lady, Wendy Volhard, who I, I've heard about her. I didn't know who she was. And we'd shake hands, and um, I flew Sheila Andrews over from England, too. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a great conference, but I shook her hand, you know, how are you? And I said to her, hey, you have an accent. <laughs> and she looks at me, that's because I'm British. <laughs> okay. I did not know that. I mean, I, I, you know. So, but it was a great, you know, it, it was a great start. And she's very easy to get to know. And, you know. So it's been a great, uh, it's been a great ride. You have a retailer in Florida watching John Hunt. Dana Brigham also adds, um, the big box store can't coach the individuals for special needs. Sure. Volhard is creating a community of support. Yeah. Throw that to you, Chad. Yeah, so uh, it's a big deal for Wendy about education. Um, we like to be responsive. We like to be able to help the person. A lot of the people that we get are in crisis. You know, they come to us. Not all of them come to us with a healthy dog. They come to us with an issue and then they heard about this food and they are hoping that this food can help them. We answer our phone, you know, they get a person. Uh, if that person who's Brenda, she first answers the phone, if she can't help them, she will definitely get in touch with me and she will ask me if I can help. And so we have layers of support yeah. all the way back to Wendy yeah. um, to try to help that individual with their specific dog's issue. So that creates trust and it creates resource for our customers we're not the company where they just buy a bag and they're on their own you know you get us with the package dana brought up a really good point about why it's not in box stores um but brenda pillow works in our main office uh she's a great customer service rep for the, mm -hmm. she really does a great job uh danae appel does a great job because she works both businesses and mm -hmm. tara sister is my business administrator and she keeps the train on the tracks uh, it's a, that team and a, how they all function together uh, mm -hmm. between, you know, because Arnold's the training director, but he deals a lot with Volhart because he deals with a lot of dogs, right? So those questions are always coming up. And then we do separate nutritional consults to go back to Dana's point. Right, right. Um, and the kennel folks, we have a kennel mistress. She's starting to learn about it. So how one thing affects another is actually really gratifying to watch. I want, how, to ask how we a, do that. I want to ask about the new rescue, yes. the hypoallergenic diet, and uh, the krill oil. We what did, you got? We did promise them that, didn't we? We did. So the biggest news to drop is the new anti-inflammatory hypoallergenic diet, which is called Rescue. And the name was exactly what it's supposed to do. So you have a dog that's having GI issues. You have a dog that's in chronic inflam you know, inflammation uh, response. Um, and nothing seems to be helping that dog. Um, you and want we're to talking, turn, we're talking shedding, uh, uh, hot spots, everything. not shedding, but I mean hot spots, right. skin issues, red, yeast redness, toes, bad ears. I mean, not able everything. to digest food. Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, IBD, all, all yep. kinds of all things. All kinds right. of issues. And it runs the gamut. You know, when you have chronic inflammation in the dog's body, it is a negative thing. There is a place for inflammation. 
and then it's supposed to go away once the issue stops. But when inflammation doesn't go away and it stays all the time, it breaks processes, exactly. right? Mm-hmm. And creates other symptomatic issues, which takes the dog offline, you know, in many ways, some worse than others. Mm-hmm. Rescue has very easily digestible vegetables in it. Um, The starch that's in that food is not uh, grain-oriented. It's tapioca and coconut meal. And both of those allow, one is a fibrous entity to help form stool, because you always need something that's going to help them have uh, a nice, clean colon. You don't want things to linger in the dog's system. And the other thing is going to be the antioxidants, the omega-3s, the balance of omega-3s and 6s. Those things are going to help break the cycle of that inflammation response, the um, unintended chronic inflammation response. The other thing that's in there is uh, our different oils, coconut oils, uh, safflower oil, sunflower. Um, There are different things in that food. That, are, that have nutritional properties that help break that cycle. Um, there are no grains. There just happens to be no grains in this food. There were 27 dogs tested for allergy issues during the um, testing environment for this food. When those results came back, chicken was the primary offender. It really was. No we changed our um, <laughs> liver that we add to our other diets, have chicken liver in it. This one has pork liver because it's neutral. It's very cooling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most dogs will not trigger on pork. So that was a difference in the feedback loop of what dogs were allergic to and how we help to mitigate those issues. Um, There are herbs in there that help support all the major organ systems. And I'm not talking about just supporting them. I'm talking about energetically through Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. It is completely balanced. So when you add the recommended protein, which is 80-20 beef, because beef is also neutral, okay, um, it won't promote an inflammatory response like a hot protein, like a venison or a lamb or something like might do in a dog that's already having an inappropriate inflammation response. Mm -hmm. You completely break that cycle and energetically it balances warm and cool so that the overall diet is neutral. And that, when it's received in the body, is better digested. Then they are starting to get nutrients. Things that they were sensitive to before, they stop being sensitive to those things. That diet can be used seasonally. So if you have a dog like mine, who is a Yorkshire Terrier, who is allergic to everything, spring and fall is her worst time. I switch to rescue before spring starts and allows her system to get out of control to begin with and keep her on it until it stabilizes, the whole pollen situation stabilizes. Right. She goes back on to AMPM, which is another one of our diets, while she's stable. And then just before fall, I stick her on it again because the molds are high and there's other things that trigger things for her. So you can use it like that, or you can use it as a 100% diet for a dog that just can't find something else to eat. The other, so that's one product. Right. The other two products that came out are the veggie packs. So. What was happening with the whole inflammation response is we're finding that a lot of people can't afford to switch to a fresh diet. And that's okay, right? But you have to do something to help your dog have a more natural diet. So with that problem in front of us and with all of the strange allergy issues, (laughs) we came up with the veggie pack. So it is five vegetables that are easily digested. It's four herbs that are all providing antioxidant, anti-inflammatory properties supporting the organ systems. It's coconut oil instead of cod liver oil because sometimes dogs trigger on fish. You have to be very careful. Um, And that can be rehydrated in a dish in less than four minutes and then poured onto kibble. So we have one that has pork liver in it. So that's Mm -hmm. a great... Um, Here's her touring. Candidate, because we're having talks about uh, kibble food not having the correct amount of amino acid building blocks in it for the dog to naturally make taurine. So it is ideal that the dog makes its own taurine. It is not ideal that a company throws synthetic taurine into a diet to check a box that is seen as foreign by the dog's body. You can see the difference there. Exactly. We use the freeze dried pork liver. That alone, even if the customer is feeding sawdust, has enough amino acid profile in it 
to exceed the minimum requirements by both AFCO and NRC. So if you have a diet, and that's what you can afford to feed, you can make that diet better by adding the pork liver version of our veggie pack. And it diversifies the microbiome with live enzymes from the vegetables. You get great omega-3s with the mm -hmm. coconut oil. It's really fantastic. The plain version, we tell people to use with our diets. Because if you use AM, PM, which is what I feed, mm -hmm. sometimes, in the winter specifically, you can't get the vegetables you want to get to put in that first porridge in the morning. Well, then you rip open a bag of the plain, because you don't need the pork liver, because the AM, PM already has that in it. And you can add the plain version into that food and use that as the vegetable. It's very uh, easy to take with you camping. So for those people who do have outdoor lifestyles, we don't want to inhibit that. But have you ever tried to carry a couple of heads of broccoli <laughs> and some lettuce well, that's and the biggest zucchini? Problem. And yeah. You can't really fit that in your overnight pack, right, in your like backpack. you think. Right. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. Uh, you'd be, you, don't you'd be amazed vegetables. what I have to take camping. <laughs> yeah. So this makes it a lot easier for those people who want to pick up and go. Or if you're traveling, if you're showing your dog. Right. You don't want to have to compromise what you feed because you can't afford to carry 14 heads of broccoli and cauliflower with you to make it fresh. Right. Um, the other product that we have, so those are the other two, uh, is krill oil. So this was born out of the necessity for people who have to cook the meat in their food. So we have a lot of raw feeders. We have a lot of people who don't like to feed raw. We have a lot of people who cannot feed raw for one reason or another. Right. I think if you have a service dog, you can't feed Right. You, you can't uh, feed raw. Compromi mm -hmm. Immunocompromised dogs should not be mm -hmm. feeding raw in all cases. Dogs that are recovering from surgery in the gut, they are leaving themselves open to uh, numbers of bacteria that they can't mm -hmm. handle the load. Um, so they cook their food. Well, we used to tell people, you know, take a whole uh, milk butter and add butter. You have to accommodate for the lost fat that has been rendered out of cooked meat. Well, your version of butter and my version of butter and his version of butter might be completely different things. <laughs> right, right. And we want to make sure the dog is getting the actual fat protein ratio that they're supposed to. So at, born out of that, we were asked for a high quality um, oil that could be used in that case so that pet owners could be sure they were doing the right thing. And so we came up with a krill oil, which is 55% krill. Um, just so you know, fun fact, uh, krill oil, if it's 100%, it's so very acidic, it melts whatever container it's in. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I so I did not know that. It's, it's, a, it's a funny <laughs> experiment yeah. when you come in and your krill oil is on the table and there's no container anymore. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> But we have balanced that. It's 55% krill, so you're getting a sustainably caught, ethically caught krill. But you're also, that's balanced with mackerel, sardine, um, and some other small fish, um, herring and anchovy. Those are the four other fish that balance out those omega-3, omega-6, DHA, EPA ratios. Um, so, you know, we wanted to make something where somebody could, uh, the other unique thing about that product though, just so you know, so one of the problems with fish oil is oxidation and rancidity. And that comes from opening and closing a jar, letting air in, touching the top of something into the mm -hmm. food and putting it back into the main container. Right. Ours is a very unique container. It took us a long time because we had to find the right thing. It is a uh, strawless pump. It's mm. done by air. You never have to open the container. You basically pump it into the food. You, there's no hands-on, there's no sticky fingers, there's no touching anything, and that eliminates a lot of the issues with oxidation and rancidity with our product. Um, so there is that. And then we came out, the fourth thing we came out with were liver treats. Um, we had such great feedback about our freeze-dried liver and our sourcing of those pigs, um, because they are sourced from farms in the United States and um, ethically sourced, that we were asked to make a training treat or a high value treat that mm -hmm. could be used in small sizes um, in order to uh, help a dog motivate themselves to do the right thing in training or to... You know your product. Yeah, I t I've lived she it. She her packaging. Yeah. I lived it. You know, how, many, how many people that do pet food best. know their packaging? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the beauty yeah, of a so small important. family Passion business. Right. I, I'm impressed. Eliza Kamins is giving you love. Gene Lee, Ryan Tuno giving you some love. Um, Bob Taylor wants to know where you are 
um, and says you're fantastic <laughs> right now um, and says that uh, I absolutely love what you're saying right now on the show with your brand. Bob Taylor's watching. You know, Bob um, Taylor had the first two dogs after I left police work. I retired. Oh, my gosh. I, I trained Where's Bob watching? Dog. In New Jersey? Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Nice. Today's show was good. You guys crushed it. I, I love, love, love speaking and interviewing and Patty invited you on her show here. But folks that are like not only uh, – ambassadors for the brand but use the brand themselves yeah, yeah. that speaks for uh the legitimacy of sure. the brand um awesome tell you uh, seriously there was this dog hunts we will take today's show in right. archive <clears throat> in totality on animalconnectionva.com very soon the dogscout.com that's right january we'll archive it on i love we'll take the audio from today's program and turn it into an itunes podcast our team will syndicate it across our network which is 17 facebook pages 17 twitter accounts the third largest instagram in the community um, a daily e-newsletter that goes out to 108,000 inboxes every morning at 11 a.m. Um, Bob said you did a fantastic job with both his labs. Thank um, you. <laughs> outstanding work um, from Bob Taylor. Mm -hmm. Thank you to the Volhard team for joining us here on What's Barking Local. It's powered by Animal Connection. An 18-year <laughs> anniversary for this business right around the corner. Follow them on Facebook to see all the value proposition Animal Connection is offering our community. It is significant. And wait for next week. What do we have? Are you going to oh, do a teaser? Well, we, uh, this is we're a surprise, have a which I'm kind of We are going to have... Are we going to have some great Danes here? We're going to have Brent Jakes <laughs> okay. and his partner Clay and Erica. Oh Eric Epic Erica from Green Dogs Unleashed. There might be... $35,000 in equipment here is all I got to say. <laughs> That's all I got to say. We have $35,000 in equipment right here. She's beautiful. This dog will sit and be regal I, and be beautiful. I, I, but there's another surprise that you don't know about. I do not. It's going to be so I do fun. not worry about And I know about it. I almost wish I didn't know about it so I could be epically surprised. Oh but my it's going to be really good. Um, and, and do come by Animal Connection yes. next Friday and Saturday. Even if you know, you're, you've know you been a customer in the past and you don't have a dog or cat anymore, come by and say hi. I mean, we're bringing in a lot of people that have been around for 18 years. It's going to be like a... Huge family reunion. reunion. Yeah. yeah. So just, just come by and say hi. This is like yeah. the 18 year high school society. reunion for animals. But <laughs> and better. people. Yeah. But way more it's fun. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, what's Barking Local? All right. Powered by Animal Connection. Enjoy your afternoon, guys. <laughs> Yay. Good recovery, too. Ooh. Yay. Thank you. you guys. <laughs> you guys did great. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, good work, guys. One more thing is we got to take the hero <laughs> picture. That's right. With the package. We will do this over here. Judah. Way to go, you're Judah. The man. You're the man, Judah. Judah was technical. Thank you for responding. Judah rescuer. Yo, oh my gosh, the, you got it. The technical hero. I'm buying you some beers, Judah. I'm buying you some beers here.